Hello dear students, hope you are all doing well. I am Dr. Zubair Shanib Bhatt and today the topic of my talk is cultural media types and uses. So let's begin. When you talk about cultural media, you if you use it uh, from the dictionary point of view and separate these two things, Culture uh, is a way of, uh, is a study in anthropology where you study different cultures like Kashmiri culture, Chinese culture, and media. There are me many media outlets out there, the news channels, the print media, okay? So, but what is uh, cultural media when it comes uh, in terms, when it comes uh, in terms to microbiology? So, in case of microbiology, if you have a microorganism around and you need to bring it back to the laboratory where you can study it so for that you need to give it food oxygen and everything it needs so when you look at this much of the study of the microbiology it depends upon the ability our ability to grow and maintain the microorganisms in the laboratory so the question arises why do we want to culture them the reason can be in two different cases. In case of uh, research, we culture them to find uh, any any new drug coming out of uh, the micro, uh, microbes. So what you have to do is you have to get it from their natural environment and then you have to culture in in the plates like this. So this is the colonies you get here. So in case of research, you can bring from the say example from the soil samples you can bring and culture them in your lab and see any of the uh, microbes is producing antibiotics for example the first antibiotic that was discovered against tuberculosis was streptomycin it was isolated from an actinomycete called as streptomyces okay but in case of your case is about diagnosis so in your laboratory when you are uh, diagnosing any uh, microbe so first thing that is if you have a patient that comes to a lab and then you have to take the samples of him so what are the different samples you can take a blood sample of the patient and you can take the stool or you can take the urine so it all depends upon what type of uh, test has been recommended to the patient by the doctors so that he can diagnose and give them a proper antibiotic treatment. So when you look on all these uh, figures which I have put out here is that they are all of culture media where you grow uh, these uh, pathogenic microorganisms which you have isolated from your the patient's blood or stool and urine these are just examples so you culture them in the lab and then see what kind of what kinds of bacteria are present inside you can identify them and once they are identified a doctor can prescribe an antibiotic against it so it helps in identification so in this picture you will see that there are different kinds of uh, media that you use and uh, the morphology of the colonies is also different and you can also grow them in the liquids so let us go further and see what it does so this is possible only we can grow the uh, i mean the, uh, the term in grow is not the growth as we see it in uh, uh, physiological terms in in microbiology the growth means multiplication of the colonies so what you see here, uh, this it's not a single colony. It's so, sorry, it's not a single microbe, but it's the colony of microbes. So growth here means increase in population of the colonies. So one microorganism when multiplies, it gives a very good spot on your agar plates, so you can identify the bacteria. So we can this is only possible if we grow them in for example in liquids or on the solid plates in an artificial medium so you had to prepare a medium from it and you can prepare it from the idea that the habitat they are uh, coming from so if they are coming from your blood blood of the patient 
So you have to ensure that all the constituents that are present in blood should be present in your artificial media. So this is what we call as cultural media. Culture means uh, the bacterial uh, growth in uh, case of population and media means in which you are able to grow them. So this can help you in making the decision. So if we go to the dictionary definition of culture medium, a culture medium is a solid or it's a liquid preparation that can be used for growing the microorganisms either on the liquid or solid plates, transport them so that you can get uh, the diagnosis done and also store them for a time being before you send the samples to the different laboratories. So now cultural media, as I told you, it can be of uh, different types based on two important parameters, based on the consistency and based on the chemical composition. So let's go further into the slides. So based on the consent, consen uh, con uh, con sorry, based on the consistency, you will see that we have a solid kind of a culture medium and we also have a liquid kind of culture medium. So let us uh, briefly talk about them. So when you talk different, try to see that what is the importance of the solid versus what is the importance of the liquid media. Let us go here and see. So solid media is actually prepared by uh, using agar and it's most commonly used to prepare the solid media as you can see here prepared in the plates. So what is agar? It's nothing but it's in polysaccharide extract. Extract means it's a combination of many things apart from polysaccharide and it's obtained from a seaweed that's called a red algae and the names of these algae can be uh, gelatidaceae or uh, gracilaria. So the agar is an uh, ideal as a solidifying agent because of, uh, of its different properties. One of them is it's bacteriologically inert. It means it will not influence the growth of the microbes on the plates. Second is uh, that it, it remains solid at a normal room temperature that is sorry uh, or at a temperature of 37 degrees Celsius and uh, when you put them in an incubator. So incubator you can set the temperature at 70, 37 degrees Celsius and they will, can be stored well. Third important property is it is transparent media as you can see here. It is very transparent when the colonies grow on its top you can see them, you can visualize them. Okay. So bacteria uh, may be identified by studying the colony morphology. So uh, we, I have worked on mycobacterium tuberculosis and uh, the morphology uh, is a particular characteristics of that bacteria which is very different from the other uh, microbes, okay? So when grown, we can, solid media, we can, you know, uh, just uh, characterize them based on the morphology of the colony. So in case of mycobacterium, we'll see that the morphology looks like this. There are small, small dots coming up here. So these are colonies. And when you stain them by zeal and sun staining, you will see like uh, they are pink in color, okay, after staining by zeal and sun staining, which is also called as acid fast staining because they neither, uh, uh, you know, take up a gram negative stain, neither gram positive stain. So for them, we have a zeal and sun staining, okay. So what can be done by using the solid media is a mixed bacteria, a colony of mixed bacteria. For example, if there are if there are different kinds of bacteria in the sample of yours, it can be a comma-shaped Vibrio cholera, it can be a rod-shaped E. coli, it can be a coccus like a, a bacillus anthracis spores. So if you want to, uh, uh, you know, separate them, so you can use it and you can only get E. coli in it. So it is a technique of culturing and subculturing. Okay, so with that you can isolate the bacteria from different populations. Okay, so this population when you get uh, only a single kind of bacteria growing on your place is called pure culture. This is the topic of our next talk. In the next lecture we'll be talking about in detail about the pure culture and the techniques we utilize in preparing it. So uh, based on the consistency, now we have solid media, I already talked about it, and now we have a liquid media. So liquid media is usually named as a broth in case of uh, the microbiology, okay? 
so we call it as broth so it is used for a profuse profuse growth means we uh, check that when we grow or uh, when we have a media around a liquid media and when the microbes start multiplying they multiply in the logarithmic phase for example 10 raised to 1 is 10, 1 then 10 raised to 2 is 100 then 10 raised to 3 is 1000 so they grow in a logarithmic growth okay so when they grow in logarithmic growth you will see the turbidity of the medium changes it becomes more viscous and this can be determined by using a technique called as uh, sorry using an instrument called as spectrophotometer okay now liquid media examples can be blood culture in liquid broth and Mixed organisms cannot be separated using the liquid media. So this is the advantage of the solid media that we can prepare pure cultures from the solid media. Now coming to the next slide. So now we also uh, based on the consistency we have differentiated into solid and liquid. Now let us differentiate them based on their chemical composition. Okay. So it means when you have an idea of the natural habitat where the microorganisms are growing so you can easily can easily determine and prepare an artificial media which you call as which can be either a defined media it means you know all the constituents or it can be a complex media so we'll be talking about it shortly okay okay so based on the chemical compositions, so we have two kinds of uh, media. So one of them is synthetic and uh, synthetic media and another is the complex media. So what's the difference between the two? So synthetic means artificial media, it's a defined media where you know all the constituents uh, that are present in the uh, media. So microorganisms usually uh, need carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, uh, phosphorus, sulfur. Apart from them, they also need sometimes calcium. Calcium 2 positive. Okay. They can use uh, sodium. They can use magnesium. But they are provided in the form of salts, not in the form of ions. Okay. So here is it uh, carbon makes a basic building block of their uh, glucose or whatever uh, food they are metabolizing. And then we have hydrogen, it's a part of the uh, glucose chain. Then we need oxygen for respiration and then nitrogen for uh, preparing the uh, amino acids and uh, the, uh, the, I mean the nucleotides. Then phosphorus in the uh, Again, in nucleotides and uh, sulfur in sulfur containing amino acids, for example, cysteine is a sulfur containing amino acid, and methionine is also a sulfur containing amino acid. So, just like us, uh, just like us, they, I mean, uh, just like our nutrition, they also need nutrients, and uh, it can be sodium positive, calcium 2 positive, magnesium 2 positive, iron can be in two forms, it, it, either it can be ferrous. Fe plus 2 or it may be ferric that is Fe plus 3. Again, I am telling you that they are not provided in the form of these ions, they are provided in the form of the salts. For example, calcium can be provided in the form of calcium chloride, okay. Magnesium can be provided in the form of magnesium sulfate, okay. So this is the way they are, uh, you know, provided. So this is a called a synthetic or defined media where we know all the constituents. So it's particularly used in research work, as I told you. So in different cases, we can study the natural habitat, natural habitat, and based on this, we can prepare an artificial or synthetic media on which you can grow these microbes to see if they can be a source of new drug. Now, what is complex media? Complex media is uh, all the constituents in the media are not well defined. Okay, so the, it can include all the synthetic components of the synthetic media, but there are some additional things. Uh, you know, for example, peptones they are uh, hydro, uh, they can be they are hydrolyzed by uh, the, they are the hydrolyzed parts of the proteins. Okay, so, and then yeast broth. 
So yeast can contain different kinds of meat broth. So meat can uh, constitute uh, different kinds of materials. So it's not uh, some of parts are not well defined. So this complex media, uh, they are here to, uh, routinely used in the uh, uh, you know your uh, laboratory. Reason being is. Uh, microbes uh, you know keep on changing their uh, metabolic uh, status and uh, you cannot use a synthetic media to uh, you know uh, grow them so the more uh, the more commonly used media in in the you know, lab is the com uh, complex media because uh, as the um, bacteria can you know change its metabolic rate so does it uh, it is being provided by different other components which are, are not well known so it can be a yeast extract okay extract has uh, different components present in it. It can be meat extract, okay? Extract has many different components which are not well defined. So as uh, the bacteria can adapt, so does our complex media adapts accordingly and we can grow them. So these are the ones which are used in the routinely in your laboratory. So these kinds of uh, complex medias we had, uh, usually can define be uh, sorry, will be classified in six different types. So these types are uh, basal media, enriched media, selective media, differential or indicator media, transport media, and storage media. So as far as these are concerned, I don't need to explain them in well because the terminology itself says what it is used for. But still we will be uh, talking about them uh, in the coming slides. So here I want to point out what is the difference between a selective media or and a differential media. So selective media, what it does is it favors only a particular uh, kind of bacteria. For example, if you provide bile salts or any dyes, for example, carbon fusion, okay, or you can provide uh, uh, gram stain, okay. So it will enhance only the gram negative bacteria for example E. coli so no gram positive bacteria will be growing against it so it favors the growth second is differential media D differential media it is, it is used for distinguishing as for example uh, if I dress up in a, a white attire using a cap I will be, I will be a Muslim but if I take a, if I have some uh, uh, clean uh, you know I will just put a bindi or uh, some tikka on my head so it will distinguish me from the Muslims. So and this differential media can be used to distinguish between different kinds of bacteria. The example here is hemolytic bacteria. So some are uh, bacteria can, uh, you know, if you if you have a blood culture and you uh, uh, grow a bacteria, if they are hemolytic, so if it is all red color, so what will it do is it will keep a white. Uh, it will give a white outgrowth because it is, uh, you know, digesting your blood in the media. So we can uh, distinguish between uh, hemolytic bacteria and non-hemolytic bacteria. So this is the main difference between the selective and differential media, which most of the students confuse. Differential media is also known as indicator media. We'll come to know, know about it. And transport and storage media, you can already think about. So let us talk about the complex media types. So one of them is the basal media. So this is uh, used usually for uh, culturing that is growth of the microbes and it does not need any enrichment. So you don't need to in, uh, add any anything else. So examples can be nutrient broth which is a liquid one, nutrient agar, it can be a peptone water as I told you peptone is a, a hydro when you break down proteins they form small small things called as peptones. So they are particularly used for going uh, staphylococcus, which is a gram positive bacteria. Coccus means it is circular in shape and also the anterior bacteria. Share. So these uh, basal media can be used for growing these two kinds of strains. Now what is enriched media? It means you add something extra to the media that is the basal media. So this enrichment can come in different ways, for example, by adding blood to it, by adding serum to it or by, by adding the white of the egg to it. So examples of the blood agar are streptococci. So streptococci are like this. They are cocci present in the straight line. Okay. And uh, we also have enriched media like algae media, which is particularly used for growing mycobacterium tuberculosis. So this algae media is prepared in a small tubes where you have like the, a slope like medium. So bacteria can grow on the slope. Okay, 
So for what you have to do is you have to keep uh, when you add agar you have to tilt this tube so that it will form a slant. So this is called LJ slant. Loversen Jensen slant. Okay. So this is what I am trying to do. Loversen Jensen slant. Now another thing is uh, we have a selective media as I told you it favors one particular kind of bacteria. So this media favors only particular uh, bacteria. Let us uh, take an example. Of it that's what are the different kinds which have which are selective in nature. That's Maconchi agar, LG medium, Lawson Jensen for Mycobacterium, Tellurite media. So what does it do? Tellurite inhibits the growth of most of the throat organisms. Okay. So when we take a uh, when we take any a sample from the throat, particularly in case of coronavirus, what we are doing is we are taking uh, samples from the throat, throat of the pa uh, patients because coronavirus is, uh, you know, either it is in in our nasal uh, nasal uh, nasal uh, area or it is present in the nasopharynx area. So we can either take a sample from the nostrils or from the throat. So that in this case, uh, telluride can be used because it inhibits uh, growth of uh, all the other. Uh, organisms except uh, diphtheria bacillus so it can you know only allow diphtheria bacteria favors the growth of uh, you know diphtheria bacilli so we can also add antibiotics to it for example penicillin can be uh, added so that it doesn't allow uh, the growth of other bacteria okay so there are uh, many different kinds of antibiotics that we use in selective media in order to kill other bacteria but favors the uh, bacteria which we are uh, uh, you know it is used for which we are residing so another is the differential media as I told you it differentiates between one kind of bacteria to the other it can also be called as indicator bacteria because uh, the color change can indicate the presence of the bacteria okay so an indicator or uh, differential media uh, so it's it's uh, particular organism causes change in the color so for example uh, when we have in indicator media, you can use uh, blood, neutral red, or telluride. So what happens in the blood agar is our Mankonki agar, they are both indicator uh, media because they can change color and let us know uh, whether the present, uh, whether the bacteria of our choice is present or not. Okay, going to the next slide, now uh, we, we continue this. So we also have transport media, as you can understand, when we when you take the samples from the patients and you need to transport it to some other labs for diagnosis. For example, in case of coronavirus, we don't have a lab here in Kashmir, it's in Pune. So you need a transport media where you can, you know, put your virus in and then transport it. So uh, in case of bacteria, these media are used when specimens cannot be cultured very soon. So you need to tra transfer them to other example to other places. So we can examples are carry Blair medium, amice medium, Stott medium. Examples of transport medium are here, and this is the picture how we uh, you know uh, take the swabs and then transport them. Another is storage media. Media means where you can store your samples until uh, you can transport them. So media can be used for uh, storing different kinds of bacteria for a longer period of time. Examples are where we can put them is, is in the white of the egg, in the uh, saline medium, that's normal saline. Normal saline means 0.9% NaCl, okay? So this can be used for storing your sample. So then uh, ch chalk cooked meat broth, so these are this is this is the way uh, in different refrigeration you can put your uh, different kinds of uh, cultures under refrigeration once you store them in these kinds of uh, mediums. Okay, so now common medias which are in uh, routine use in your lab are you can see that we have a uh, nutrient agar and this is how the plates uh, become once uh, they gel up and become solidified. Uh, this is an example of a uh, blood agar. This is your example of blood agar. This is your uh, box in the form of uh, which is called a nutrient broth. So broth is a liquid, so it prepares these kinds of liquids where you can culture different kinds of bacteria. So mycobacterium tuberculosis can be uh, cultured in the uh, in the broth. So that broth is named as seven H nine broth. Okay. So again, different kinds of bacteria can also be, uh, you know, use, used, for example, this kind of bacteria can be used in, uh, I will be talking about it shortly.
so uh, neutron broth and agar and peptone water so this figure i was showing you is about the peptone water this is the peptone water so peptone as i told you it's a big um, takedown product of the uh, uh, proteins so this peptone water can be used as a culture media of growing many different kinds of microbes okay so when you talk about nutrient broth you can simply prepare it uh, it's, uh, uh, it's chemical constituents or uh, 500 gram of the meat so it's a, either an ox hot and I mean the ox heart, which can be mixed and uh, you know mi uh, mince means uh, you will just uh, put it in a slide and uh, you know make a paste out of it and then you can mix it with one liter of water uh, so and 10 gram of peptones 5 gram of uh, NaCl are added and you maintain the pH uh, in an uh, alkaline pH so that is around 7.3 so what are its uses? It can be used as a basal media, that's common media, and it can be used also to study the soluble products or the bacteria because uh, bacteria can produce many kinds of products. For example, uh, they can produce antibiotics, they can produce endotoxins, they can produce exotoxins, they can produce enterotoxins. Okay, so different kinds of toxins. Okay, so nutrient agar, uh, it's uh, it is a solid that remains at 37 degrees Celsius you can store it uh, it's prepared by its, it's con chemical constants are 2.5 percent of agar that's added to the broth so when you prepare a broth that's called nutrient broth you can simply add this 2.5 gram uh, agar on it so this broth can be converted into agar nutrient agar so it is heated at 100 degrees Celsius and uh, melted and agar is then cooled to prepare the plates Peptone water, 1% uh, of uh, peptone and half a percent of sodium chloride. It is used as a base for uh, sugar media and, 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 and it can be used for uh, uh, using uh, in a test called indoor, uh, indoor, uh, test indoor formation. Blood agars mostly commonly used in the media, 5 to 10% uh, defibrinated sheep or uh, horse blood you can take and then you add it to the melted agar at around 45 to 50 degrees celsius so what blood does is it acts as an enrichment so that the bacteria can grow and it also acts as an indicator when the colonies you know if it is changing the color uh, on the red plate so it is also indicator of that hemolytic bacteria certain bacteria when grown in a blood agar for example hemolysis around their colonies so if you have a blood agar and it is, it is completely filled with a red color. So when a hemolytic bacteria grows, it forms a white colony around itself. It's in its surrounding. Okay. So now we also have chocolate and uh, maconkri agar. Uh, don't confuse it with the chocolates we eat today. I'm just joking. So chocolate agar or heated uh, blood agar, another name of the cho chocolate agar is. So it means you have to heat it. So prepared by heating blood agar, okay. It is used for the culture of uh, pneumococcus, gonococcus, meningococcus, and hemophilic, hemophilus bacteria. So heating the blood inactivates the inhibitors uh, of uh, growth. Okay, Manconchi agar most commonly used for anterior bacteria. It contains agar, peptone water, sodium chloride, bile salts, lactose, and neutral red. So it is a selective as well as an indicator uh, media. So it means it will uh, allow only uh, it will favor the growth of one kind of a bacteria and it when it changes the color when, it, uh, when the colonies uh, change the color surrounding them. So uh, so it's also uh, uh, considered as an indicator uh, medium. So it's a selective medium as bile salts allow the growth of anterior bacteria only but uh, you know uh, doesn't allow others to grow. So you can add also the antibiotics to it. So indicator medium, it means it can change the color. It can make a color change as the colonies of the bacteria that can ferment lactose. So for example, you have a lactose growing bacteria on your plate. So it takes a pink color due to the production of acid. So when, when the lactose is fermented and it becomes an acid, so it changes the color from the red to the pink. As it turns the indicator neutral to red to the pink, as I told you, that are called lactose fermenters. For example, H. E. coli or H. H. coli is a gram-negative bacteria that's well known 
bacteria in, uh, throughout the history of the microbiology. It has been used in genetic engineering and normally it's present in your intestine as a, uh, but if it comes uh, out and infects uh, uh, to a human being at other side, okay? So in that case, uh, we can say that it is, <coughs> it can be a pathogen. So as a indicator bacteria, we can find it and the e whether E. coli is not there. So we can use this McGonkey agar. So Carolus coli indicates that lactose is not fermenting. So non-fermenting bacteria can be isolated. So there is bacteria that is known, for example, Salmonella, Shigelia, and Vibrio, which causes Vibrio cholera. It's a common shaped bacteria, comma shaped. So these are the features of the chocolate and McConkey agar. Now, dubious liquid, low for serum, and uh, telluride. So let us first talk about dubious medium. Uh, along with dubious medium, there's a one broth, as I told you, for culturing the microbacterium. So the liquid medium is used for culturing different kinds of tuberculosis. For example, mycobacterium tuberculosis is one. Uh, micro, mycobacterium bovis is the tuberculosis of the cattle. So it contains around uh, it contains twin 80 twin 80 is like a, a soft detergent it doesn't allow the colonies to club together so we can get a good odor of the media so uh, it also uh, contains bovine bovine serum albumin casein hydrolo uh, casein hydrolysed asparagine and salts so twin 80 as i told you it uh, it causes a dispersed growth doesn't allow the colony to make a clumping and uh, bovine albumin co uh, causes a rapid growth, so it, it, it enriches the media. So in this medium, uh, we can also do what is what we uh, are about to take it and study it in detail in the next lecture is the drug sensitivity test. So this is for the tuberculosis, uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. Another is a law for serum. You can understand it's a liquid media. So serum is used for enrichment. Uh, sheep, ox or horse serum is used. Particularly, uh, diphtheria bacilli, which causes Cornubacterium diphtheri, caused by a bacteria called Cornubacterium diphtheri. It grows in this medium uh, in around 6 hours when you incubate it at 37 degrees Celsius, when the secondary bacteria do not grow. So it's used for uh, rapid diagnosis of uh, diphtheria, that's Cornubacterium diphtherium, and uh, it's also used for uh, demonstration of volatile granules which are present in the um, uh, particular uh, bacteria, particularly in diphtheria. So we also have telluride blood agar. It's used as a selective media. Again, I tell you that it favors one kind of a bacteria instead of, a, of the other. So you can use it for isolation of cordium bacterium diphtheria. And telluride inhibits the growth of secondary uh, bacteria. It means the contamination. So you can say that it removes uh, other contaminants. So one, if you are culturing one bacteria and uh, you are getting a growth of the other one, so it is contaminating your culture. Okay, so one bacteria can contaminate the other bacteria. So these kinds of uh, medias can allow us to selectively allow the growth of our bacteria instead of the uh, bacteria we don't consider. So that kind of bacteria will consider it as a contamination. So it's also used as indicator media. Again, a color change can take place as the bacteria diphtheria bacilli. It produces a black colonies as telluride uh, metabolizes to uh, tel telebrism, which has a black color. So only diphtheria bacilli has an ability to metabolize this telebrism in the uh, telluride media and because it, when it changes to black color, it means the diphtheria is there. So you can diagnose it and tell it to the doctor that the patient has an infection of coronary bacteria diphtheria. Okay. Some other are Muller Hinton agar, his serum water and LJ medium, agar solid, his serum water liquid, LJ media semi-solid okay so muller hinton agar mh agar simply called as muller hinton it is helping in us uh, doing a drug diff uh, diffusion assay or a drug uh, diffusion sensitivity test of different antimicrobial uh, agents and uh, it should be carried on this media as per the recommendations of the who uh, and because this can promote uh, re reproducibility and compatibility. It means we can use it again and again to see whether our results are, can be reproduced. Okay. So now we have uh, another is his serum water. Again, a liquid media. This medium is used to study the fermentation reactions of a bacteria which can not grow in a peptone water sugar media. So, for example, if they are not growing in the peptone water, we can use his serum water. So, examples is we can grow pneumococcus on it. Pneumo means which causes pneumonia, and cocos is they are circular in structure. 
Nazeria gonorrhea, which is in causing STD, that is sexually transmitted disease. That's Nazeria and coronary bacterium that causes coronary bacterium diphtheria, which we already talked about. Now, we're talking about the LJ media, uh, lower St. Jensen media. So, it's called uh, sort in LJ media, L and J. It's a semi solid media. Uh, it is green in color. Okay. I've seen it because I collected my mycobacterium strains from the hospital of uh, uh, Dalgate Drogjin when I was working on my tuberculosis work during my PhD. So it can be used to culture uh, the tubercle uh, bacillus. So what they used to do is uh, the samples that they uh, get from the patients, they first decontaminate them. It means they remove all the bacteria that are present except the mycobacterium tuberculosis and then they grow, grow it on a, a semi-solid media. So it, it's like a bottle, okay, and the media is in the form of a slant. So it increases the surface area so that the mycobacterium can grow. So colonies are visible on the surface, so you can just take the colonies out and you can culture them in the broth or wherever you want to do, whatever reactions or whatever, uh, uh, you know, experiments you want to do. Particularly, I'm talking about research, not uh, diagnosis. So what does it contain? It contains uh, white of the egg. It contains molecular green, as I told you, it's uh, light green in color and it uses glycerol as a source of carbon. So every microbe uh, needs a source of a carbon source of uh, energy okay and source of nitrogen okay so egg is an enrichment so it, it can also be called as enriched media uh, which stimulates the growth of the mycobacterium tuberculosis malachite green inhibits the role of this malachite green is it inhibits the organisms other than mycobacteria so it can be used as uh, you can say that um, selective media and you can add malachite green or any other antibiotic so glycerol uh, gives as a source of carbon, it promotes the growth of mycobacterium tuberculosis but not mycobacterium bovis which is present in the cattle. So TB, mycobacterium tuberculosis causes TB in humans and mycobacterium bovis causes TB in cattle. So you can easily differentiate it when you are using LJ medium. Now, what are the other kinds of mediums which you might have rarely heard of? They are EMB, SS, DCA, XLD and tetrathionate broth. So EMB is called eosin methylene blue agar. It's a selective as well as an indicator. We can call it as a differential bacteria because it can differentiate between one bacteria from the other for uh, gram-negative rods. So first it is a selective media. It can select only gram-negative rods. Example is E. coli. Okay. okay. That, that selects, selects against gram positive bacteria, bacteria for, for example, example bacillus anthracis, anthracis is a gram positive bacteria, bacteria so it will not allow bacillus anthracis to grow on it okay so, so lactose, lactose fermenting, fermenting colonies are colored and non-lactose fermenting colonies are non-pigmented so, so just as i told you fermentation of uh, the lactose into acid it can change the red color into pink color so we can use it as an indicator media so another is ss agar that is salmonella shigelia agar salmonella it is a selective medium particularly used to grow uh, salmonella and shigelia and it's used to isolate these uh, two kinds of microbes from their specimens ss agar uh, with an additional bile salt it, it's also and if you add this salt to it it can be used to grow yersinia antidococcalactia is such when, when it is suspected. DCA called as toxicolate citrate agar. It's again a selective media. prefers one bacteria over the other. It's used to isolate Salmonella and Shigelia and other injury bacteria uh, and inhibits others there. It is also a differential media. It means it indicates by a change of color in the presence of uh, lactose is it gives a neutral red when it's fermented into an acid. Okay, XLD xyloslicine uh, deoxycholate. It is a selective media again, favors one bacteria over the other. It can be used to isolate Salmonella and Shigelia from the stool samples. So, as I told you in the beginning, the sample can be a blood, can be a stool, or it can be urine. These are the most common samples you get. In complicated conditions, uh, you may have to take the um, spinal cord, spinal cord fluid. Okay. 
So another is uh, tetrathionyl broth. It acts as a selective media. Again, it favors one kind of a growth, that is salmonella, and you can uh, collect it uh, from the stool of the patients. And it inhibits other normal uh, intestinal microflora. So there are many different kinds of microflora in your intestine. So one of them is also E. coli. So it will not allow the E. coli to grow on it, and it will only allow salmonella to grow. Okay, so. Another media are uh, trisulfate citrate piles across the TCPS agar. It is a selective media and is used to isolate uh, the comma shaped video cholera, which causes cholera. Same case is it means you lose a lot of water with the stool and other uh, video species from the stool again. Sample is here stool. So, charcoal uh, yeast agar is used for isolating ligonelia and pneumophilia. Increased concentration of iron when you add iron to it and when you add cysteine to it, that is uh, the sulfur containing amino acid, it allows growth of this kind of a bacteria. Telluride uh, gelatin agar media, that is uh, TG TGAM, it may be used uh, as a transport media, a selective media as an in indicator media, so it has triple effect. So, <laughs> consider this is one of the, uh, remember this kind of a medium. Okay. It's used in transporting selective indicator, then uh, Campylobacter medium. This uh, is a selective media again for isolating the Campylobacterium jejunum, jejunum, which is present in your uh, long, I mean, your large intestine, helium jejunum, and so Campylo, uh, Campylo from the stool again. So it's present in your large intestine. So, so Kali Blair medium is used to transport media, it is in transport medium for the feces, that is the stool that may contain either Salmonella, Shigella, Vibrio or Campylobacter species. Selenite F broth uses the function same as that of the tetrathionate broth. So here is tetrathionate broth. Okay. So, so next is uh, amines media. Amines media is used for gonococcites, particularly you can find it in the uh, vagina of the females, okay, and um, other areas. Peptone water sugar media is an indicator media. It means it changes the color when the bacteria is there. To study the sugar fermentation, how is it made? One person solution of sugar, lactose, glucose, mannitol is added to the peptone water containing this uh, andurate. Indicator. So remember this name, andarate indicator in the test tube. So we also have a small uh, two ham tube is placed in the media. The media are, the media is initially colorless after culture changes the media to uh, red color. So it is an indicator media because it produces acid. So whenever acid is produced, it can produce a red or pink color. So if gases are produced, it is collected in this Durham tube. So, so motility indole urea, urea media is used to differentiate, I mean, um, you can differentiate means you can distinguish between the different kinds of bacteria. So it, it can be used to distinguish anterior bacteria from other species and uh, you can differentiate its motility, its ability to break down urea and the indole reactions. Indole is actually a five ring member and it can be uh, degraded and it can uh, change the color. Another is uh, Kai. Kai is uh, Clinger Iron Agar, so it con contains particularly iron. So this is a differential slope media, as I told you, slope media is like this. When you try to, so this is how you prepare the slope. So while it's wet, you just tilt the uh, tube and it will form a slope. So it's used for identification of enteric bacteria. The reactions are based on the fermentation of lactose and glucose. Lactose is a disaccharide. Okay, okay. is made up of glucose and galactose, and uh, glucose is a manus, uh, monosaccharide production of hydrogen sulfide. So, so then another is uh, crystals and urea media. This is uh, used to uh, identify urea, uh, which are uh, splitting the urea. Uh, urea is actually, uh, we don't uh, secrete urea most of the time, it's uh, the birds which uh, secrete urea. So we convert, uh, sorry, birds uh, secrete uric acid. And uh, we uh, produce urea, and then when it's diluted with water, it forms urine. Okay. So again, I am telling you that different kinds of samples: urine, stool, blood. So it can be used to uh, see whether the proteus bacteria is there, and it can change the purple color. Indicates that the urea is splitting. Again, an indicator media. 
So let me end it with this, that there are also other kinds of uh, common use media is Borland, is Gen 1 media. This media is used to culture uh, Bordetella pertussis. Okay, so increased concentration, if you increase the concentration, increased concentration of uh, blood allows the growth. So you can see the color is red because of the blood. So it is an enriched media, you can enrich it with blood. It contains uh, agar, which makes it a solid uh, plate. It contains potato, it contains NaCl, that's sodium chloride. It contains glycerol, which produces source of carbon, peptone, water, and 50% uh, of horse uh, blood. So what color you are seeing here is the blood of the horse. So penicillin can be uh, added to this bacteria in, uh, in order to uh, you know, uh, degrade any gram-positive bacteria contamination. 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 Okay. So I think uh, you might have understood the importance of the uh, all the cultural media and many kinds of media. Now you will be working in the lab with these uh, media. So uh, be prepared. Prepare yourself well before you go into the uh, laboratory uh, exam. So one of the uh, candidate. Uh, I think I remember by his name, Omar, I think he's from MLT. So he was uh, telling telling us that uh, we should not focus on theory, rather uh, the practicals should be done. But uh, what I do is what our mission is that we want you to uh, become stable by having a knowledge first and then you can demonstrate it in your lab. So hope you understood this lecture. Thank you very much and see you next time in the next lecture.